Since 2011, all of our college outbreaks have been because of meningitis B. Um, let's talk a little bit about the vaccines. And um, there are several uh, men meningitis vaccines. Which ones do kids and teens need? So at 11 to 12, children are recommended to get the men ACWI vaccine. First, I will want to just clarify that for meningococcal meningitis, there are five most common serogroups that will likely cause meningococcal meningitis. And those serogroups are A, B, C, W, and Y. So at 11 to 12, you get a um, NACWI vaccine. And then at 16, you get a very important booster dose from NACWI. Now that meningitis B vaccines are available in the U.S., that's when the child will start their meningitis B vaccination series. So at that 16-year-old visit, they'll get their booster dose of MenACWI, and then preferably in the other arm, they'll start their meningitis B vaccination series and come back six months later to get their meningitis B um, second vaccine to complete the series. We also now have a pentavalent vaccine, which covers all five serogroups, covers uh, men A, B, C, W and Y, and that's one shot, and that could be given at that 16-year-old visit. Instead of getting two shots, one in one arm, one in the other, it's, I mean, who doesn't want to get one less shot? You can then get, you <laughs> Especially know, teenagers. <laughs> of course, you you can then get the um, pentavalent vaccine in one arm and just make sure you go back six months later to get the separate meningitis B vaccine to complete it. Uh, Dr. Vega, what misconceptions or worries do you encounter most from parents and caregivers about the meningitis vaccines? Um, and how do you address these concerns with parents? I think I hear a lot of the same concerns I do for vaccines in general. Like we're getting, is it safe? Um, are we giving too much vaccine to my child? Because we're giving this vaccine around the time we're thinking about giving the HPV vaccine. Maybe they're due for other, certainly every year they should be getting a flu vaccine considering a COVID vaccine. Um, and it seems like a lot for parents, but just uh, one thing I tell them is that while we certainly have more vaccines available, including uh, meningitis, which we didn't have, you know, 20 years ago, certainly, um, the, that's just more protection. So the reason we give vaccines, this is, you know, this ounce of prevention, you know, which, which is associated with, with a sore arm and more rarely you can feel a little tired, but that usually goes away in a day. Treat it easy with acetaminophen or an anti-inflammatory drug if you need it. Um, the the benefit is that you can prevent these terrible illnesses. So, and, and in addition, while we have an expansion in the number of vaccines, the actual products you're getting in those vaccines is much fewer because we used to, you know, before the, the vaccinologists really worked on the technology with preserving the vaccine and, and making it stronger. Um, now we've taken a lot of those chemicals out. We've taken a lot of those adjuvants out. So you're actually getting a much more purified product that has been proven in technology and tested in thousands and thousands of individuals and proven to be safe. So that's one thing is you're, you're, yes, it is. Nobody likes a shot, as you said. Um, but the, the point is that you, we have these sporadic cases um, in otherwise healthy kids. These are healthy kids who get terrible uh, sequelae of uh, meningitis and it is a preventable condition. Um, I know for me, meningitis was on my radar just because of our experience when she was little, our daughter was little. And as soon as uh, our doctor started, you know, he mentioned it to me, I was like, yep, we're on board. Like we already, we've been there, done that in, in some capacity. So that, that conversation was rather easy for me to have with my healthcare provider, but either Patty or Dr. Vega, uh, either one, uh, this question is what questions should parents ask their child, child's doctor or nurse to make sure that their, ch their um, child is fully, pr fully protected? They should specifically ask, has my child received both meningococcal meningitis vaccines, the one that protects against ACW and Y and the one that protects against B, because without adding a meningitis B vaccine, they are not as protected as possible. And I live that and I know it. And mm -hmm. I know the devastating consequences. I would like to just talk about the another misconception. Sure. Another is that parents believe that since their child received the MenACWI vaccine due to their state's school and or college requirements, that they are as fully protected as possible, when in fact it's very likely that they didn't receive the meningitis B vaccine. Mm -hmm. 
since 2011, all of our college amp since 2011, all of our college outbreaks have been because of meningitis B. So, you know, parents think they fulfilled this requirement and think that they're done. But really, if they haven't received a meningitis B vaccine, they are not as fully protected as they possibly can be. And, you know, and it's not just a college disease. My right. daughter, Kimberly, was 17 years old, living at home with me, not living in a dormitory setting. Yes, we know that college students are five times more likely to contract meningococcal meningitis than non-college students. However, 16 to 23-year-olds are the ones who are at highest risk. That is really good information. And it's a very good point about, you know, making sure that you're asking all the questions, you know, are they, are we, is my kid maximally protected against um, men meningitis? Um uh, where should parents look for more information about the disease and how to protect their children? They can go to the uh, website for the American Society for Meningitis Prevention, which is meningitisprevention.org, as well as the CDC. And, and I would just have a conversation with your clinician. Uh, that's, this is really, so you want to be Try to be proactive. I know it's confusing. This A, B, C, W, Y. Right. We can't choose like which serum groups are going to become the most prevalent, but those are the most prevalent. I know it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, and it is confusing. So, yeah, educate yourself at these uh, these these valued sites that are trusted, um, and then ask questions. Uh, maybe make a list when you go in and, and include meningitis on that list. Even if you just ask about meningitis in general, it's going to trigger a clinician to hopefully think about. Gosh, have we been able to maxly vaccinate um, this patient? And if not, then there's a shared decision-making process between you and uh, your clinician. And it sounds like the conversation should start much earlier than high school, because I think, Patty, you mentioned the first round is 11 to 12. So mm -hmm. this is also good information for parents of tweens, um, that this journey starts way before the kids walk into the, the college dorm room and way before they walk into the halls of high school. So this is an important conversation for parents of slightly younger children, too. Absolutely. Yeah, certainly. We want to, you know, there's 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 reasons in place to protect uh, children starting at age 11 to 12 because, you know, we can get it. You know, we have seen uh, meningococcal meningitis and meningococcal disease um, in that age group. So so that's when we initiate treatment. And then you want to get that booster dose after 16 to make sure they're fully protected. Well, thank you, Dr. Vega and Patty, for joining us and for the to the audience for tuning in. Patty, is there anything else you'd like to say to us, or you know, any closing remarks that you'd like to uh, tell our audience? Um, anything special you'd like to tell us about Kimberly? Goodness, I could go on and on about Kimberly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she was just this great kid. She was popular. She was, you know, the kids, the kids, her her friends would go to her as the voice of reason. She was a dancer. She was a singer. She would just grab a microphone and just sing and slide into the kitchen with her socks. You know, she was, she just loved to perform and she was really good. Oh. And um, what I would say though to parents is don't take the chance. Don't take the chance of not having your child as fully protected against meningococcal meningitis as possible. I would give anything to have my daughter back. There's not a minute that goes by that I don't think of her. So please, please have the conversation with your healthcare provider. Oh. Well, thank you again, Patty and Dr. Vega. And I am very honored to have been part of this conversation. And I thank you for your time. And I hope that parents that have tuned in will head to the websites uh, that we've mentioned and uh, that you will click for further information about uh, meningitis uh, prevention in the comments.